Hi, Josh Barker with Josh Barker Real Estate. Thank you for checking out our market update for the month of July, 2024. What we like to do at this point each year is we actually do a mid-year review and just kind of talk in broader strokes about the market. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing to look at, obviously, is just how many new listings are coming to the market this year. So in the beginning of the year, we were pretty optimistic we'd see more inventory coming, but it turns out that inventory right now is very similar in terms of units bring to come into the market as it was last year. We finished right now in the mid 2000 range. So if you're wondering what that looks like, um, the report will be actually in this video as well at the bottom. The next thing to look at is just how many homes actually sold year to date. So right now we're looking at, we're in the low 1000 range for total homes sold uh, year to date, which is very similar to last year. But here's where the changes are starting to show up. Right now, our pending report over the last couple of months is showing that our pendings are down. Every year here in Shasta County, we expect that we're gonna see a, what we call a spring rush. And that rush runs pretty much from about April all the way through about the end of June, July. This year, we never really hit that pending spring rush that we're used to seeing, which tells us that we're probably gonna have a softer year by the end of the year. So we're gonna be watching that a little closer and keeping an eye on it. The next thing to look at is just the new construction piece. Right now, new construction in the uh, city of Reading. Um, the permits that they show in their statistics only go through May, but year to date through May, there was a total of 33 permits that were pulled. That's up slightly over last year, but it's way down from two years ago when it was in the low 80 range. Builders are continuing to have a hard time acquiring property and building at a price that buyers can afford because of today's interest rates. Right now, they're telling us that they're having a hard time with supplies, with labor, and of course, with those additional regulations that the state continues to add on to new construction. And it's just making it very problematic for them to replenish the housing market with new construction. Now, we're all hopeful that rates will come down, and as they do, that'll give that release on pressure on the builders so they can build more, but that's what we're looking at, and that's why you don't see a ton of new construction here in our local market. Next thing to look at is just those interest rates I keep on referring to. Right now, interest rates are averaging around seven and a quarter percent. If you go back to about the beginning of the year and look online, you'll probably see that the rates were averaging at that point around 6.75%. But over this last year, we actually saw rates as high as 8%. And so we've had significant pressure, we call it headwinds, significant pressure on the ability for homes to uh, go up in value, but also for buyer demand. Right now, the reality is that there's still a huge collection of property owners that are in their homes right now at 3% interest rates. And in many cases, they feel stuck because they can't sell that home and go buy another home today and then experience a seven and a quarter percent interest rate. So the whole market has slowed down as a result of this. Uh, the economists in the marketplace also know that's the case because when transactions happen, it actually has other benefits to the rest of the economy. And so when you have fewer home sales overall, you're really starting to see that drag and show up in other areas in the economy. So we'll be watching that again. The next thing to look at is just the rental market itself. Some of our listeners are, are either in the rental market or they own rental property or they might be thinking about buying it. Here's what I can say about the rental market. If you go to rentdata.org and you can check there by zip code, right now if you look in the city of Reading, the average three bedroom, two bathroom home with a two car garage with roughly 1400 square feet of living space is renting out for roughly $2,095 a month. Now that is a price that you know is fairly secure. The challenge that we're running into and why rents have not become any more affordable is that when you have fewer homes coming to market and when you have a high interest rate environment with fewer buyer sales, those folks are staying in rentals. And if they're staying in rentals, that keeps the rental market tight. Now, this isn't the case for the short-term rental market. The short-term rental market is still soft. Right now, we're hearing reports that in some cases, those rentals are, the short-term rentals are transitioning either to the long-term rental market or they're choosing to liquidate them altogether because they simply just can't get those cash flow projections that they had when they initially thought about having it as a short-term rental. Next thing to look at is just fire insurance. Many of you already know this. Fire insurance has continued to be a big challenge over the last year and a half here in the state of California. And, and, and honestly, it's in, in the same thing for other states in the country as well. But in California, all of us know what the big issue is, it's around those fires. And so what happened was the state insurance commissioner made it fairly problematic for insurance companies to raise their rates um, at a pace that could keep them profitable in the state. As a result, some of you already know this, there was policies that were not being renewed. There's been policies that are getting canceled. 
There's actually insurance companies that have left the state of California altogether because they just simply can't stay profitable. Well, now it's become a big issue because now the state insurance company, their fair plan, they are overburdened with so many applicants that they can't simply help to solve this issue with the insurance market. So the state commissioner for the insurance commissioner came out and said, hey, we're gonna come out with a new regulation. We're gonna propose this to all the insurance companies in the nation in the hopes that obviously they can attract more insurance companies back to the state. It's likely that this is going to help, but it's gonna also take some time. So for some of us out that are concerned about these higher rate environments, yes, they're high, and yes, they'll likely still be high in the, sh in the short term. But in the long term, there appears to be some solutions that they're working on to try to bring down the overall cost of insurance. And the last thing to look at in here is just the major lawsuit that some of you may have already heard about in our real estate industry. Not to go too far down this rabbit hole, but I will share this with you. There was a major lawsuit earlier this year that came out of Missouri. What came out of it that has the impact on our business and on most of our consumers here in our market was there was two rule changes that had to be made for realtors. The first rule change was is that starting in August, middle of August, realtors before showing a home to a buyer will be required to sit down with the buyer, discuss a scope of services, discuss how they get paid, and sign what's called a buyer broker agreement. For some of you, you might be familiar with it. It's kind of like an engagement letter like you would sign with an attorney or sign with a CPA. Then you'll go out and view a property. That is a huge change because now buyers simply talk to an agent over the phone and go meet them at the house to see a property and it's a really easy experience. Well, in the future, there will be another layer where you'll have to discuss uh, a buyer broker agreement with a buyer and it's gonna have an impact on how people are perceiving the industry. The next thing, next major rule change was that in the future, home sellers will not be able to advertise offers of compensation to a buyer broker on the multiple listing service. And what I mean by that is like typically right now, a listing agent lists the property and let's say hypothetically they listed at two and a half percent is the fee I would charge to help you sell your home. And then on the other side, the seller makes a decision what they want to incentivize a buying broker to perhaps show their home. And oftentimes, let's say they'd offer them that two and a half percent. Well, in the past, we would actually advertise that on the multiple listing service so that the buyer brokers were aware of what that commission was. In the future, that will not be advertised anymore. The buyer agent will not know that by just going on the multiple listing service. It's not that those types of things won't continue to happen though. The reality is, is that 60 to 80% of all buyers in today's market need assistance in order to purchase the home. Either they're asking for a seller credit or if they had to pay a buying broker, they would need the assistance from the seller to help pay for that fee. So the reality of it is, is that we think that the, the way in which money is exchanged in real estate will likely stay very much the same. It's just how and when someone pays for those fees and how it's, it's disclosed is gonna be much more transparent, which we always th obviously think is a good thing. So in any case, if you have any other questions around the real estate market here in Shasta County, just know we're always here to help. Thank you again for taking your time with us today. Have a great day.